everybody's always trying to figure out what's next, especially within generative AI. And I'm a little biased because of my background in patent law, but I always find something like this patent landscape report by WIPO or the World Intellectual Property Organization is a fantastic way to follow the money. Companies doing their due diligence, doing their R&D, are investing in things that they see a future in. And that's why, logically, I believe this is a great resource to figure out what are people investing in, what models, what industries, in order to give you kind of some insight on where things are going. I do want to add a bit of my own narrative just based on my experience and what I'm seeing within this space, but overall, it seems to match. So you can go through this whole 114 page report, but I just want to hit the, the highlights here. Who is investing in generative AI? Software and other applications, up, 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 up. By far, this is where most of the patents are being file, filed. Um, and, and just to kind of give additional knowledge, patents can't be protecting like the actual algorithms and the actual models. You can't, anything that is a law of nature, which math falls into, is not patentable. What you do patent is the methodology, the utility of a machine learning model. And of course, it has to be new, novel, um, useful, and can't be out there within the world at any point. People always say that people steal patents. You got to be the inventor. There can't be any evidence of you stealing other people's work, yada, yada, yada. It's very, very difficult to steal someone's work and then patent it. But, but anyway, life science is coming in second is not a surprise. Uh, there's two industries overall that I've seen investing the most in generative AI. That is the life science pharmaceutical space because of things like, you know, NVIDIA Bio Nemo, for example, giving the accelerated development of new drug discovery that they wouldn't have otherwise had access to. We're constantly seeing a lot of academic research being published. Like I just saw one from the University of Toronto. I think it's a new model called PepFlow that's competing with Google DeepMind's AlphaFold 2. Uh, you just continually see just development. It's one thing to invest the money. It's another thing academic wise, people getting their PhDs and be able to get funding, but people want to return on investment and things like drug discovery within the life sciences and associated other work is an easy correlation to make. When you can accelerate the development of drugs, be more intelligent, get more de novo drug discovery that you otherwise wouldn't get with uh, traditional methods, that's an in your face. What is surprising to me is how far banking and finance is down the list. Well, it's surprising and it's not. And it's it's one thing because the financial services companies are investing pretty much and in, in adopting much quicker at the rate that is just barely second from what I've seen to pharmaceuticals and life sciences because of things like fraud detection and transactions, conversational AI, and this is also in conjunction with, I believe, telecommunications, which is right here, because they're able to create a an improved customer service experience. The ability to leverage LLMs, uh, conversational AI, to take a global company like a Chase Bank, for example, and really personalize the experience for a customer. I mean, on one hand, it's like, yeah, now I'm talking to an AI robot. On the other hand, if I can get that personalized experience that gets me to the crux of issues that I'm having much quicker and resolved, then I guess I really don't care because time is the only finite resource I have. So improve my customer experience. Algorithmic trading is interesting. For example, Bridgewater start a $2 billion fund um, that uses machine learning for decision making and will include models from OpenAI, Anthropic and Perplexity. So they're leveraging other models, but perhaps there's some trade secrets that are happening. So th this was always a conversation to have with clients within patent law is that if you can protect something like the Coke recipe is a, a perfect example, if something can be protected that couldn't otherwise be figured out, like you can't drink Coke and determine what the, the whole like ingredients, the mixture and whatnot within it is, you should keep it a trade secret. Probably an assumption that Bridgewater is doing something uh, to that effect. If it's something that you can easily figure out and you want, need to protect it, then you want to file something like a patent. So that could be an explanation why things are much lower in terms of banking finance. The other explanation, 
this is, I think, a more likely hypothesis that I have, is that banking and finance traditionally doesn't invest in a lot of research and development as other industries like the life sciences. They don't have in-house researchers um, trying to protect things that are of so much use like generative AI. So I think that there's going to be a future flip. And I think we're going to see banking finance slowly climb the ladder as these companies are willing to invest in generative AI, uh, commit further adoption of this and try to re like really see the ROI. That is the biggest thing with generative AI is measuring the return on investment. Things like LLMs, very, very difficult when you're trying to leverage that as like an internal productivity optimizer versus conversational AI, improving customer experience. You can correlate the ROI much easier because you can reduce headcount within customer service and you can or you can exponentially increase their output with the utilization of, of LLMs. So that, that kind of makes sense. Anywhere you see kind of just an in-your-face investment is... It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I also want to touch on this McKinsey article because there is a bit of correlation on McKinsey's global report of the investments within the AI space, specifically within generative AI. And this chart right here in front of me shows an investment of the customization of development of the own model. So this is a percent versus buying something off the shelf. Energy and materials, 60-40. A lot of these companies are developing in-house. Um, I saw pharmaceuticals here, 47.53. Uh, that is somewhat surprising, but there are things again, like I mentioned, NVIDIA's BioNemo, their Clara platform, that um, I, I've heard customers say that they just want their researchers to work on what they're researching, not developing the models. So that kind of makes sense. So one more thing i want to share which i thought was interesting and the key findings and insights of this well first of all i mean look at the amount of the scientific publications and patents that are being filed year over year again these companies are seeing returns on investment and i think it should plateau i mean you can't just infinitely spend it can't not you know keep exponentially increasing but this is why we're seeing an increase and it's China, 38,210 versus U.S. in second place at 6,200. China is putting a lot of investments. And in the models that are being shown, generative adversarial networks, which I think are super cool, uh, variational autoencoders, decoder-based large language models. Now, I, I just want to talk about GANs for, for uh, just a quick kind of use case. When I go over here, fraud detection and transactions, you can use GANs to, to generate fraudulent synthetic data for your uh, adversarial network model. And the model will continually train itself versus the fake versus the real transactions to the point where it becomes more intelligent and more useful. And that's where you're seeing things like image being used, video, speech, sound for deep fake detection. Incredibly interesting area, which is, again, why it really surprises me that financial services is so low on the list. But it makes sense that there's companies really specializing in this. So they're probably the ones developing the pr pr uh, proprietary technology. And then companies like big banks are leveraging that technology rather than develop their own. But eventually, as things get more sophisticated and that becomes kind of the secret sauce, I think you're going to see banks uh, invest more in the research and development and the filing of additional patents. Um, like we said, top application areas of generative AI, software being number one. That's where we are seeing and utilizing generative AI the most. Life sciences, um, document management and publishing is interesting. And then business solutions, yada, 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 yada. So it's all about following the money. What's being invested in? where it's being invested, and then in what industries. Hope you find this useful. Let me know in the comments. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you found this useful, and just you know keep the conversation going. What are you using generative AI for, personal life or in business?